Do we start to panic now, Oxford fans? Because that was terrible. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the newly named OUFC Fan View. And it's time to review another Oxford United game. Today, Oxford were away at Peterborough United. After a couple of wins in the Cup for Des Buckingham's Oxford United, it was back to league action this afternoon. Last time out... We got a very plucky and decent 0-0 draw against Bolton Wanderers. But it was another tough game today away at Peterborough. Another side just behind us in the league table. Still searching for the first league win for Des Buckingham. Still searching for the first league goal for Des Buckingham. And that continues because this was an awful display from Oxford United today. Well beaten, thoroughly beaten by Peterborough. They put the icing on the cake at the end of the game. Horrible. Look away now. But fair play to posh fans and congratulations to you guys. Great win for you today. It ended. Peterborough 3. Oxford United 0. And I hate to say it, but a spirited second half performance very much just felt like it was polishing a turd for much of the afternoon. Is it time to panic? Oxford fans, have we been found out and is the promotion campaign spiralling out of control? We will get into all of it. I will go over the team news. I will do a match review. I will give player ratings. They're not going to be good. And I will give my final thoughts at the end. As always, I put timestamps down below, so feel free to jump to any part of the video that you want to. But please, if you do that, and I need these more than ever on defeats like this, if you can hit the like button, that does help me out so much and if you can subscribe to the channel if you like the content I'll appreciate that too so let's take it back to the start then let's look at the team news and let's start with Oxford United's team for this afternoon and Des Buckingham made one change from the side that drew nil nil against Bolton that is Ruben Rodriguez back into the side after suspension in his usual number 10 role and then Billy Bowden switched out to the left also Kyle Edwards is injured so that means he's not going to be available to at least the new year not really much of a surprise I would guess because Oxford were pretty decent in that nil nil draw so not surprising that he didn't make too many changes but I would have liked to have seen Josh Murphy start. I'd have liked to have seen Tyler Goodrum start. I thought both of them have been quite impactful in recent weeks, uh, but both of them had to settle for a place on the bench. Moving on to Peterborough now, playing the same formation as Oxford, the 4-2-3-1, and Darren Ferguson's posh side started the day in fifth place. Obviously now they've jumped ahead of Oxford United in the table, and their home form in particular is formidable and we certainly saw that today and this is it they usually win they usually keep clean sheets at London Road I'm going to call it London Road it reminds me of the manor ground and that's uh, something I need I need to keep happy thoughts in my mind today and after their cup action they played the same 11 they got a 2-2 draw away at Stevenage and looking at that game Stevenage went 2-0 up posh fought back probably should have gone on to win it they dominated the large parts of that game but just like when we played Bolton you look at that front line and you just think, my goodness, there's a lot of attacking pace and power there. When you see the shortcomings in the Oxford United lineup, you can't help but be a little bit jealous when you see the pace of power of players like Ricky J. Jones, Kwame Poku and Efren Mason Clark. And to top it all off, you've got Johnson Clark Harris, who has been like the main man for Peterborough for quite a number of years now. He can't obviously there's transfer um scandal if you like around him which is probably why he's not getting as much game time but he's only on the bench for Peterborough now he would walk into most sides in this league including ours so let's have a look at this game then let's see where Peterborough went on and won this game comfortably but it didn't start like a raging fire for Peterborough it was quite cagey for the opening 10 minutes both sides like we saw against Bolton both sides kind of cancelling each other out a little bit. Uh, you did feel like counter-attacks might be the key to victory for either side today, and Peterborough got their first chance through an Oxford United, through Oxford United giving the ball away in midfield. They got the break going. Jay Jones was running in on the left, Oxford United's right. He got into the area, but his shot was well saved by James Beadle. And until the opening goal, there wasn't a lot 
in the game really as i said it was kind of both sides kind of feeling each other out a little bit the one thing i would say is peterborough just looked like they had more intensity to their attacking play when they would get the ball they'd always look to try and get in behind oxford or create something much more quickly than oxford were able to do our build-up play was very slow very ponderous uh, we people just got, got back into their shape better just did everything a little bit better than oxford in these opening moments then obviously that ratcheted up and on 23 minutes peterborough took the lead elliot moore lost the ball in midfield and it created another chance for Peterborough for Jay Jones to run forward down the left hand side Oxford United's right Oxford did get bodies back to be fair and it looked like they kind of snuffed the chance out but they got the ball back to Collins he took a long range shot from the edge of the box Beadle got down to save it they didn't do enough really but the ball and the ball stayed in play it was good anticipation from Burrows to get to the loose ball first he was able to cut it back to Kiprianu and he was able to tap it into a net 4-1-0. Not great from Oxford United's point of view. From Peterborough's point of view, it's a very good stinging counter punch um, and really good anticipation from those guys, from those bodies getting into the box from a good shot. Um, they were just anticipating that rebound much better than the Oxford United defence. And that's what really annoyed me. Yes, Beadle could have done better, but Oxford players just weren't alive to that rebound and they weren't as sharp as the Peterborough players getting into that rebound and Elliot Moore obviously has to take a little bit of blame for that for that mistake but Oxford did well funneling it back it wasn't just on Moore's mistake that that goal came it was also quite sloppy as I say it was more the sloppiness of Oxford just um not following in on the rebound and just allowing Peterborough to take that chance. And once they got in front of the game, they just did not hold back. Peterborough just grew into this game and completely overran Oxford for the remainder of the first half, really. Collins and Cipriano dominating that midfield. The movement of the likes of Randall causing Oxford so many problems. They just seem to be getting in behind us time and time again. You felt a second goal was coming and on 34 minutes it came. 2-0 to the posh. Horrible goal for Oxford United to concede. Peterborough just hitting a long ball forward. Mason Clark's able to get on it. Chests the ball down. Just hits the ball over his shoulder into space. Jordan Thornley could easily clear this ball. But he lets it run through to James Beadle. James Beadle slips. So he's not able to get on the ball. And it means Jay Jones. He is rapid. And he is able to get onto the ball first ahead of James Beadle. Knock it around him and tap it into an empty net. Terrible, terrible goal for Oxford United to concede. Not great from Beadle. Again on this second goal. Um, he does redeem himself in this game. But you know, he stumbled. I mean, what much you could do. But also formally, just clear the bloody ball, man. What are you doing? Just piss around at the back just inviting pressure and now we're basically out of the game at two nil down you know how much we struggle to come back from losing positions but if people are giving Beadle pale pelters then you really just need to wind your necks in because he kept Oxford United in this game it could easily have been three nil it could have easily been four nil at the break as Posh just ripped through Oxford time and time again Randall forced Beadle into a fine save with his feet and then three minutes later on 38 minutes it was Beadle again Jay James Jones just, Jade Jones, sorry, just blew past Moore, blew past Thornley, and Beadle had to come out to make a smart save when Jones was one on one. There was nothing more than just a pump up field, and Moore just, just was ca caught by James Jones' pace, and then he blew past Thornley as well, like he wasn't even there. It was like resistance of a soaking wet piece of paper as we've not seen a side rip us apart like what Peterborough did in these opening, uh, in this first half, in this like 20, final 20 minutes of the first half. Really lucky to have any chance at all of being in this game, Oxford. That was the only crumb of comfort you could say. And, it, and, and Peterborough, knowing this, did just sit back a little bit for the final five minutes of the first half. They were able to just sit, you know, and just let Oxford have a little bit more of the ball. So it felt like Oxford wrestled back a little bit more of the ball, but not looking threatening in any way, shape or form. At half time, it was 2-0. And I have to say, Peter Brutt thoroughly deserved it, as you can tell by my comments. It was really tough to see Oxford getting back into this one. Peter Brutt just from the, from the passing the ball out from the back to the pressing in midfield to the intensity of their passing and obviously the speed and movement of their forward players just did everything better than what Oxford United were doing um it's pretty it was looking grim it was gr it was grim conditions and it was grim on the scoreline and as I said we were lucky to only be 2-0 down 
Half-time substitution from Buckingham and Josh Murphy did come on to replace Stan Mills. And there was urgency in Oxford United in the second half. And at the start of the second half as well, at least you can say they came out and played with a little bit more urgency and a little bit more intensity to their game. It was an early chance for Oxford. Brannigan with a raking ball out to Bowden, who'd come over to the right-hand side. He got a ball into the box. It came back to McGuane, who shoveled a chance over the bar. Murphy also as well, showing good intent, like he's done in recent weeks. He won a corner early on, and he hit a long-range effort miles over the bar. But... Were there signs that Oxford were going to get back into this? But if there were Port, Port, Peterborough, I nearly said Portsmouth, Peterborough also still looked really dangerous every time they went forward as well. And they were just as likely to get a third as Oxford were to get a second. And Mason Clark and Randall fired a couple of chances high and wide from the edge of the box from good areas from themselves. But Oxford were at least more in the game. And with Josh Murphy, you felt we had a player that was at least causing Peterborough some problems. He blew past Kioso. He got him on a book in and then he was able to just kick and rush past him time and time again. He got a wicked ball into the box. Bowden felt he was fouled, but Oxford didn't get anything. And then Oxford did have a little period where two or three players just seemed to throw themselves to the ground trying to win a penalty. But the referee was nothing given. It got a bit tiresome, really. Um, but it did also create a chance for Marcus McGuane, who actually forced Posh's keeper into like the only save he made. It was a good save. Forced it behind. Um, yeah, Marcus McGuane actually was a good effort. You know, nice to see him getting forward. Obviously, he got that goal in the FA Cup. We do need to see more goals from him. And maybe on another day, there was a couple of times Kiosso, um, Murphy got round Kiosso, and there was one little tug back that the referee didn't give. That he thought maybe if he did, it could have got a red card. But this, these are all ifs, buts, and maybes. Game stayed at 2-0 for a long time. And while it stayed at 2-0, and with Oxford playing a little bit better, you just felt if one goes in, we might... We might be able to get uh, Posh nervous and we might be able to force our way back into it. But let's be honest and let's put cards on the table here. When you're 2-0 down, it's much easier to play, to come out and you've got nothing to lose. And putting effort in is the least we expect. It's the least we expect. But the threat of it being more goals for Peterborough remained. And that, as I said, they looked just as likely to add to their tally. And we needed James Beadle to keep us in it uh, right until the end of the game. And he made an incredible save to keep a deflected Poku effort out. Um, some lazy defending from Bennett there who came on there. I, I must say there was a couple of instances where I thought he looked quite lazy. Maybe showed his lack of game time in defensive areas. Drifted into injury time. Uh, Oxford, again, not really looking likely that they were going to score a goal. And on in injury time, Peterborough made it 3-0. And that was a scoreline more fitting of the dominance that they had over this game. Peterborough moved the ball down the right-hand side. And Murphy and Bennett, Murphy not showing the defensive side of his game. We know that's not his strength. But Bennett just looked a little bit leggy, even in the few minutes that he came on as well. They didn't do a very good job of defending it. People were able to get the ball across to the substitute de Avaland, who was unmarked. Of course he was unmarked from about the penalty spot. And he was able to uh, side foot it into the back of the net. So 3-0 down. Oxford come away from London Road. Apart from showing some effort in the second half, you have to say overall, well beaten. Terrible performance. Terrible result. Well done to Peterborough. Congratulations to you guys. You can flood the comments with as many disparaging and degrading and derogatory marks about Oxford as you like because you deserve it. I'll give my final thoughts about both sides at the end, but now it's time to move on to the player ratings. Yeah, you probably knew these aren't going to be good, but James Beadle starts with a six. Um, I, I'm going to give him a six because the goals that went in, obviously didn't do great for the second one the first one maybe he could have pushed that round the post to stop Peterborough being able to get the rebound but he made a string of fine saves in this game and he's still an excellent shot stopper um today some of his distribution wasn't great out from the back but I mean I'm just going to give him a six because there was some good there was some bad but he definitely definitely made some good saves Stevens gets a six as well I'd actually say he was probably Probably the most solid out of the back four. I thought he made some good tackles and some good blocks in the second half. He was okay. He did not much from him going forward, but I thought he was okay at least. Jordan Thornley gets a four. I thought he was very poor today. I thought he was quite weak with his defending, and obviously he 
the lack of the pace and the movement of Peterborough just ripped Thornley and Moore apart. And I don't think he um, covered himself in much glory for that second goal in particular. But Elliot Moore didn't have a very good game either. And that, that though the movement of the Peterborough front four, if you like, just was was just put Oxford under constant pressure, and they didn't deal with it very well. I mean, he's not when you when you're playing when more when he's having to turn and run back to goal that's not when he's at his strength and the pacey and powerful players are going to get behind him and um posh weren't a side that's going to play many balls into the air air so you didn't see the best of elliot more defensively today not good at playing the ball out from the back either so it's a four out of ten from the skipper kieran brown gets a five i just thought maybe he was slightly better than the center back pair and i thought he was quite solid like he usually is and i thought he was okay um but not great so he gets a five i thought marcus mcguane was generally quite poor i thought his passing was really sloppy throughout the game i thought in the second half he was better at least he had a couple of good efforts on goal or good efforts efforts on goal um the second one was pretty decent and he was a little bit better with his passing in the second half as was cameron brannigan i thought generally he was poor in the first half they lost that midfield battle but was a little bit better in the second half thank goodness he didn't get booked so he wasn't out for this reading game uh, but you did see a little bit more of his passing um, range in the second half but nothing that's going to give him a higher grade than a five stan mills gets a five as well he I, I'm just going to give him a... He probably could have got a lot worse, but he wasn't. He was only on for 45 minutes. He struggled to get into the game. There was only one run, I think, where he uh, tried to put Peterborough on the back foot, but largely anonymous, so he gets a five. Billy Bowden gets a six. Um, there were some times where he got in some good areas and some decent passing in the second half, and maybe he could have got a penalty um, in the second half as well, but I don't... I think maybe he was... Of the players that started, maybe the brightest of them but not certainly not good and gets a six and rodriguez gets a five and, and other than some okay defensive work in the first half he was just largely anonymous from an attacking point of view didn't just didn't really get into the game at all couldn't get oxford onto the front foot and he gets a five he went off injured as well so hopefully that's not going to be too long term because obviously we know he is a good player. Mark Harris, the drought continues. Didn't even really get a sniff up top today. He only gets a five. Actually, the first four, 10 minutes, he, he started quite lively. But Oxford just, either he can't get into the game and create chances for himself, or Oxford struggled to get chances for him. So he gets a five out of 10. Josh Murphy came on on 45 minutes, and I would actually say he was Oxford's best player. He gets a seven because he at least put Port Peterborough on the back foot, and I would like to see him start against Reading. Tyler gets a six, came on, and he, look, he tried. It wasn't great today, but at least there's a couple of times he, he got the ball and tried to make something happen, even if that was just almost giving the ball straight back to Peterborough but the the effort and intent at least was a bit better when Goodrum came on so he gets a six Bennett came on after 69 minutes and I'm actually going to give him a five I don't think he played well when he came on I thought he looked a little bit um like he hadn't played for a while and, and while he was quite solid in the in the trophy game this was a step up into league football and I don't think his defending looked very good but there's no point throwing the baby out of the bathwater with him because he hasn't played league football for a long time. So he gets a 5 out of 10. Um, Gatlin Odonka came in late into the game like he usually does, as did Oshin Smith. So those two far too late to be graded. So let's move on to the manager, Des Buckingham. And I have to give him a 4. Uh, I think this was a really bad first half performance from Oxford United. We looked didn't look anything like a side pushing for promotion at the top of the table. There's going to be so many questions already that are going to spark um, un stupid ones about his hands in the pockets on the sidelines, which I don't have any problem at about at all. But again, Oxford have had the best part of a week to prepare for this game. And we've just turned up and we've looked like we've been just reacting to what Peterborough had done. We looked like we didn't really know what they were going to, how they were going to like attack us or be a big threat to us. And we didn't look like we had any answer of what we were going to do to handle it. We just look, we look like we've regressed a little bit going forward. We just look more ponderous on the ball and we look slower on the ball. And I don't know how much you can put down to Buckingham. These are only observations I could see made on his um short term in tar in charge of the club um 
and that obviously needs to improve. And, and we, we we obviously struggled to score that many goals or kill games off, and that's really tailed off in the last few weeks. And I think that we have definitely are moving the ball and passing the ball around a lot slower. We did it better in the second half, but not enough to cause a constant threat throughout the whole second half half and of course we're still looking for a first league win and we're still looking for a first league goal under Des Buckingham as well but I don't think his subs were good today uh, look I think Murphy was all right and I thought Goodrum was a good choice but I don't get I don't get the Thornley off for Bennett and I don't get why we're 2-0 down in a game why take Harris off to just replace it like for like? Why not just go two up front? Why not just do something different? We ended up losing the game 3-0 anyway. So why not just change it and try something different? Throw a few balls up top. Maybe Gatling can battle for something. Maybe Harris can get onto a loose ball. Maybe something might break for us. But... We just kept playing the same way. And it didn't work. And it ended up getting worse. So... Things need to improve for Buckingham very quickly. Uh, we've got a lot of this Reading game seems very, very important now um, that we get something from that game. And I, mo we need a win, really, don't we, from that game now. Uh, and it's not been a great start at all. And uh, I have to give him a four. And that brings me on to my final thoughts. And let's start with Peterborough United. And... Um, very impressive side. I, th I thought they would be, and they are. Uh, my thoughts, my preconceived thoughts on Peterborough, which are very unfair, are normally based on the fact of they're as much likely to batter you as you are to batter them, as they they can be unbelievably dynamic going forward, but can have a bit of a soft underbelly. And that is definitely unfair on what I've seen today this was a very well organized side a very hard side to break down a very good defensive unit with very good leaders in that back line too that weren't very well tested by Oxford United I was, must say but very confident at moving the ball out from the back at beating a press and when they do get the ball into forward areas there's no fucking around from Peterborough United they're getting it and they're playing like Good football, but very, very purposeful football. Trying to get players in behind, trying to get runners in behind, creating space, players gambling, getting up, get, getting players and bodies forward into forward areas, bodies into the box, and as I say, a constant threat all afternoon, and up there with Bolton as the most difficult side we've had to face going forward. And they're very much blessed with good attacking players, and if they can keep those players fit, and they can keep that structure from what I've seen today, they look a better side than us. They look a much better side than us. It's only on one game, and but this is the level Oxford United need to get to if we're going to be serious about knocking on the door for automatic promotion. But congratulations, Peterborough fans. Leave your comments down below. I would like to know your thoughts on how you think you're going to get on this season. Your thoughts on Clark Harris. Interested to know about that. And, um, yeah, just good luck for the rest of the season. And that moves me on to Oxford United. Are we in meltdown? Are we in crisis? Is this spiralling out of control? Uh, it feels like it could be. It's on the cusp of something. A bad feeling going into this game today. I don't know why. It just felt like we were in bad form, even though we haven't really played a league game in a while. It just felt like we've gone off the boil a little bit and just felt like Buckingham hasn't hit the ground running. And injuries to some key players. and It just felt like things are a little bit stale at the club at the moment. I I, I didn't mind the, the, the starting lineup today, but they just played very limp wristedly. There's a bad way to describe it, but they just seemed to be very like, like no one seemed to be able to wanted to take that many risks in an attacking area. We didn't have a lot of options of being able to ex get caught, uh, hit Peterborough of any pace. Um, the movement wasn't was very static in the first half as well. And it just very made it very easy to defend again. That changed a lot when Murphy came on. And you have to just wonder why he wasn't given the reins at the start of the game to just say, just go out and give it a go. And if he's not playing great, then you can change it from there. But I think from now on, you, you have to you have to give Murphy a start. Give this front line more of a dynamic feel. Uh, I feel Mills is a lot better when he's not the only pacey player when there's another foot, uh, attacking player on the uh, pacey player on the other side that can stretch the team as well um but everybody just feels a little bit off the boil you can't get away from the fact of how um 
poor we look in front of goal lately as well. And um, yeah, Tuesday night looks a worry now, doesn't it? Looks a real worry. Um, I don't really know. I, th I think I, I don't think Ben is ready to start a game. So I think you have to keep Brown at left back. And I think you have to keep Thornley in there with, with Elliot Moore. I do think Thornley played quite well against Bolton. Um, so you, you have to keep them in there. And th this Reading game is going to be hopefully a good, big, hostile crowd. Reading not in great form themselves. Hopefully Oxford can go there and put on a show against this Reading side. But if Reading are going to sit back and counter-attack, and if Reading do get the first goal, I'm very worried of how Oxford United are going to get back into these games but also as well the lack of imagination of just trying something different as i said would it kill us to try some 442 would it kill us to try some 352 i mean we got th beat 3 nil today so how much worse can it be would it would it be so rip up the textbook rip up rip up the the bible of how we're gonna play to just try something a little bit different to try and you know give us a bit more of an attacking threat Oh, what a bad day. What a horrible day. <sighs> Don't you love football? I know I do. But thanks for watching, guys. Not been an easy one today. Leave your comments down below. Hit like. I bloody need them today. And we'll be back to do a re review of the Reading game. That review probably won't be out till the Wednesday morning because that game is going to kick off at 8 and I probably won't get a chance to do it before I start work. Um, so that'll be out Wednesday morning. So look out for that one. Hopefully we can get back to winning ways. Oh, come on, you yellows. It was tough today. I'll see you soon.